Hi, I'm Cookie. And four out of five dentists agree, I'm a great kisser. Just me and you? That's good. Now we can talk real loud. And our wrong answer of the game is sponsored by... Fistable Bowling Equipment, Inc. Bury yourself in your ball, right up to your wrist. Fistable Bowling Equipment. Okie doke, this is really happening. First question, Muppet Rabies. Considering their natural life cycles, which Muppet baby shouldn't have arms? Baby Fozzie, Baby Rolf, Baby Piggy, or Baby Kerb? Frogs are armless tadpoles during the early stages of their life cycles. So really, Baby Kermit shouldn't have any arms or legs. Or be able to talk, or sleep in a crib with a bear and a pig. Now that I think about it, there are a lot of problems with that show. Up next, Girl Got Issues. If Joan of Arc revealed her visions on the Dr. Phil show, what would he tell her? Let's get real, you don't really want to kill your dad. Let me show you something. Joan of Arc claimed to hear the voices of Saints Michael, Catherine, and Margaret, which persuaded her to save France from the English attempt at conquest in the 100 Years' War. But Dr. Phil only answers to one voice, and that's Oprah. No, her head wasn't in the gutter. And you know what else is never in the gutter? A one-hole fistable bowling ball. Just like the one you just won from Fistable Bowling Equipment, Inc. Because when life gives you a 7-10 split, you should fist it hard. This wrong answer of the game has netted you an extra 4,000. Congratulations. Why not try all headbands on deck? If the CEO of Old Navy required his employees to refer to him as the highest naval officer rank, how should he be addressed? The captain of cargo pants? The master? In the naval hierarchy, the fleet admiral is the highest possible ranking. But that's just his day title. At home, he requires his family to refer to him as the seaman of boxer shorts. Next up, Intern Art History 101. And yep, it's a dis or dat. I'm gonna read off seven names. For each one, tell me if it's a video with over a quarter million views on YouTube or a painting by Renoir. If it's a YouTube video, press your X button. If it's a Renoir painting, Press your B button. Each one right gets you $300. But get one wrong, 300 bucks goes down the YouTube. And you've got 30 seconds to paint this picture. Alrighty then, here it comes. Woman in a rocking chair. Three young girls at the piano. Dog eats dinner. Great lady fucks. Young boy with a kiss. History of dance. Nude on cushions. As Renoir would say, dude, you totally pwned. Look, I dare you to find me a work of art in the Louvre that is better than a cat playing a piano. <laughs> I mean, it's a cat playing piano. <laughs> no, no, don't stop. Don't stop. <laughs> Where's the vibe, girl? Rock my world, girl. Ooh, yeah. How about it's in the mole? If I wanted to whack one mole worth of moles during a game of whack-a-mole, how many would that be? 3.14159 moles? Eight that? One mole is a unit of measurement used in chemistry that is equal to Avogadro's number, which is roughly 602 followed by 21 zeros. That's a lot of moles. And whacking that many moles will win me 25.3 billion Dave & Buster's prize tickets, which is almost enough to win an ashtray and a comb. That's round one. And you're doing pretty well, probably because there's no competition. Remember, in round two, every question is worth double. Okay then, here we go.
Say hello to... Stop eating your crayons. Which of these is not a Crayola crayon eating another Crayola crayon? An elephant eating a peanut? A I kid you not, Crayola has 120 of what they call core colors. And six of them are manatee, salmon, canary, inchworm, beaver, and macaroni and cheese. There is no elephant or peanut. Some other actual Crayola colors I could have used. A timber wolf eating asparagus. A pink flamingo eating cotton candy. And a beaver eating macaroni and cheese. Wait, did I already mention that? <laughs> I guess I did. Oh well, I just wanted to be sure I mentioned a beaver eating macaroni and cheese. Well, let's beaver eating macaroni and cheese on to the next question. Question 7! Here we have... My eyebrows are lettuce, and my gym teacher married me. Oh, man, I had another really bonkers dream last night. Oh, eating pizza and watching a movie before bed. Why can't I quit you? Anyway, in the dream, I figured out a way to live among my cats, mayonnaise, and poopsie by downloading my brain into a fake cat. I learned about and became a part of their cat culture. Meow. Meow, 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 meow. Meow, 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 meow. But then my mom attacked all of us and destroyed the giant tree where we all lived. Which is crazy because my mom really is a cat person. Anyway, what freaking movie was I watching last night that gave me such a weird dream? Watchmen? Avatar? Oh yeah, I was watching James Cameron's Avatar. Overall, it was a pretty amazing dream. I mean, I wouldn't award it best dream of the year or anything, but it was good. The part where I attached my ponytail to my cat was a little awkward, though. Blocking chickens, picking out a mate. Guess I'll marry eight. It's time for... Who Arted? Which of these classic toys would French artist George Surratt probably enjoy the most? Play-Doh, alphabet magnets, light... George Surratt is considered the father of pointillism, a painting technique using a combination of colored dots just like a light bright. And speaking of classic toys, Silly Putty is great if you want to counterfeit any works of art, except that they always come out in reverse and flesh-colored. Take a stab at Windows 7. Which musician could not use his or her name as a Windows file name? Kesha, Questlove, Will I Am, or Old Dirty? Windows file names cannot contain a less than, greater than, colon, double quotation mark, forward or backslash, vertical bar, asterisk, or question mark. So Questlove couldn't name a file with his name on a Windows computer. <laughs> But he could just pick a different symbol. Well, almost any symbol. He couldn't be colon love. Hold me, never let me go. And my dream <laughs> Let's try hopscotch on the rocks. Okay, take a moment to collect your thoughts. This next question is going to require some high-level mathematical thinking. What I'm about to ask you has puzzled humans for centuries. Ready? How many squares do you make when you play four square? Four, five, six, or... There are the four titular squares, of course. Then there's the one big square they make up together. I was gonna ask how many squares there are in a tic-tac-toe board, but I didn't want to blow your mind. Step right up to... Oh, you know all about the attack. Lovely. Here's your clue. What does your P mean? My P is just perfect. Good luck.
Well, you really know your peas. I bet you never fell for the old ICUP trick. <laughs> ICUP. <laughs> you don't know Jack! That's a wrap. Donnie, what's happening? All right, then. Have you any tinkling for jumping back into the proceedings? 